Okay, well, it looks like we have several people that are with us. I did get some last minute uh, declines based on competing uh, dilemmas, priorities, and I'm not sure we have a quorum. So we will proceed and get started. Do we have, let's see. All right, so in lieu of our sign-in sheet, I'm going to actually just do roll call. Um, I don't see our guest speakers, Megan Hayes and Jenna Aubenshine. We're here. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. So again, greetings. My name is Cheryl Pollock. This is our Commission on the Status of Women monthly meeting. Today is June 1st and we are meeting virtually due to COVID-19. I'm going to officially call the meeting to order. It is 11.03 a.m. We do have guest speakers with us today and we will circle back as soon as we do our roll call and um, identify if there are any public comments that were submitted. So roll call. Elisa Guy. Present. Jennifer C. I'm here. Great, Gail Armstrong. I think that was one of the emails, Morgan, right? They started coming in rapid fire, so I didn't get all of them. Yes, uh, Gail's one of them. I also just got an email from Jean, who's trying to join, so I'm helping her really quick. Okay. And then Kelly Sin, I know she had another meeting that she chairs um, today. Lisa, I see Lisa Richardson. Present, can you hear me? Yep, very well. Okay. And then I did get an email from Dr. Waddell that she is not with us today. Please keep her in your thoughts. She had a, um, a loss, her, her pet died. We don't have a new representative from Metropolitan Ministry, so that's is blank. Jean Nathy is still trying to log on. Teresa Foster. Rosario Torres, Summer Robertson. Rosario just asked for the link to. Okay. So. Summer, are you with us? And Lauren Maselli, I see you. There you are. <laughs> So for a quorum, we need eight, and we have five. So if we have anything to vote on, we just cannot do that until we have at least eight participants logged in. Okay. Well, I'm going to move on. Uh, Todd, did we have any public comment? questions or any comments submitted we did not that i'm aware of okay thank you now in the absence of summer i would like to request uh another commission uh commission member to record meeting minutes i realized that we only had two weeks between today and the last meeting so it, it kind of snuck up on us so morgan and i um, put them together Friday, and I was able to edit them and get them out with Morgan's assistance this morning. So thank you, Morgan. <laughs> but as we were um, told by Johanna several times, this is a uh, commission responsibility, so we definitely don't want to lean too heavily on our um, BOCC staff. So can someone please volunteer to take meeting notes today? It's hard for me to facilitate and take notes. I will, Cheryl. This thank is Lisa. You. Awesome, thank you. And we we can send you the template that we are using so that there's consistency. That'd be great. So with that, I would like to um, table the approval of the minutes because as I said, we don't have eight people. Any luck, Morgan, getting Jean and Rosario on? I sent them both the link and asked them to 
call me if they had any issues logging into it. So hopefully they're working on that now. Okay. Oh, Kelly's there. I can mark her hair. All right. Hi, Kelly. So we have six. So if Rosario and Jean are able to get on, then we will have eight. Um, but we can't approve the minute, minutes from last time. If there were any edits, we can perhaps accept those and bring it back up at the end of the meeting. Did everyone get a chance to review the minutes? I know we sent them out later than normal, but. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Great, thank yes. you. Yes. All right, well, with that, as we know, we have been uh, having some consistent discussions on our focus and our uh, content area that the commission would like to take some action on and really rally around uh, a particular area for our community. And <clears throat> we invited our guest speakers today and they are from the uh, the task force that we've been talking about. Thanks, Thank you, Kelly, for organizing and coordinating their presence at our meeting today. Um, so with that, I would like to introduce Megan Hayes from the city of Newport Ritchie and Jenna Ovenshine from Sunrise Pasco. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So I don't know if you ladies already talked about how you're going to uh, share the presentation, but the floor is yours and we are here to listen and learn. Okay, wonderful. Um, I actually created a PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> is there a way for me to share my screen? I see that there's... Yep, one second. Okay. One second and I'll give you the permissions. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yep. And you should be good to go. Wonderful, thank you. Okay. Can you all see that? Yes, we can. Thank you. You can. Okay, wonderful. So, uh, I mean, you have already introduced us, but again, I'm Jenna. I'm one of the chairs of the task force, and I work at Sunrise of Pasco. And I'm Megan Hayes. I am a victim advocate at Newport Chief Police Department. Thank you guys so much for having us this morning. So to get started about the task force, um, in 2019, we came together and decided to recreate our mission statement, mission and vision statement. Uh, we have a focus on coordinating agencies, departments, and the courts to promote safety and justice for survivors. We are focused on having agencies take a stand against domestic violence. So our attendees include representatives from various law enforcement agencies, advocacy centers, governmental institutions, health and social service agencies, and faith-based organizations. So we decided the best way to accomplish the goals that we've set out for the task force is to separate into um, subcommittees. So we have four different subcommittees at this time, and we are working on five different initiatives. Uh, one of those is a batter's intervention program directory, which we will touch back on in a little bit. So before we go too much into that, we wanted to share some stats with you guys from Pasco County. I don't know what all you have been presented with previously, but there's some things that we thought were very impactful and very important to share. So in the last five years, domestic violence offenses in Pasco County have increased by 44%. It's pretty big. And 2018, there were 4,537 domestic violence related offenses. There was 1,156 women and children who stayed in shelter and 3,113 crisis calls made to our hotlines here. It's a, a really big issue that the county is facing and women, clearly. Right, and just to give some more background on um, what domestic violence looks like in Pasco County, this little chart, it's not, uh, it's not controlled for population, but as you can see, Pasco County ranks as number nine in the state for most domestic violence offenses. And then the next slide, we, um, we 
be compared to different populations in Florida to each other. So the Tampa Bay area, including Hillsborough, Pinellas, and Pasco County versus Miami-Dade County, we both have a population of about 2.8 million people. Um, but uh, Tampa Bay area experiences domestic violence over twice as often uh, reported domestic violence. So as you can see, our domestic violence offenses from, I believe this was 2018, were at 17,000 and Miami-Dade was at 8,000. So our percentage of population experiencing reported domestic violence is almost twice that of Miami-Dade. And so when I shared, I was practicing with my coworker, when I shared that slide um, with him, he was like, well, that's gotta be because of Hillsborough County because they have a higher population. And although they do have a higher population, as you can see from 2018, their population was at 1.4 million. Um, their rate of victimization was actually lower than ours. Their rate of victimization was 0.48%. Uh, we have about a little bit over a third of less, than, a little bit over less than a third of the population of Hillsborough. We're at 526,000 people, but our DV offenses are at 0.86%. So as you can see that little map of Florida over there, that is controlled for population. So that's the total DV offenses per 100,000 people. Um, Pasco County is the darkest. Uh, that's on that map, unfortunately. So just to give um, some background on what domestic violence is in Pasco County, it is unfortunately a very serious issue. So I know you all brought us here to find out how you can help. And we've been brainstorming different things. And I know that this, this might seem very surface level, but awareness is so, so important. Like sharing social media campaigns. I know it doesn't sound like a big deal. It's something super easy to do, but it, it allows so many things. It opens so many doors. You would be surprised how many people are unaware that services exist, both survivors and community partners. I hear all the time from people who come in, I wish I would have known about this a year ago, five years ago, whatever it is. So that helps. It teaches people how to respond appropriately, you know, as opposed to, oh, just stick it out or, you know, it'll get better after this passes, things like that. It, and it keeps a topic current. If something's not being talked about, nothing's happening. Nobody's doing anything about it. It also allows survivors to see they're not alone, that it's not their fault, which is something they all believe. They all carry a lot of guilt and think that all of it's their fault. Um, we empower them through just a, little statements, you know, that, that bring them up, these little memes they see, and they grab them and save them, and it means everything. And it can also help dispel harmful gender norms, the same things that we were talking about, about how you respond to something. You know, if they think, oh, well, women should be submissive, that can be a problem. That's something that perpetrates domestic violence. Right, so one of our primary initiatives that we're working on right now is our batters intervention um, program directory. So just to give some background on what batters intervention is, uh, we refer to it as BIP. It's a program that's normally court ordered and uh, it's to help offenders uh, be accountable for their actions. It's really focused on victim safety. Um, Jenna's gonna go more into it, but VIP is not anger management. Um, and that's a really important mm -hmm. distinction to me to make. Um, this is specifically for domestic violence perpetrators. Right. And before I change the slide, I also want to focus on the better accountability and talk about holding offenders accountable. That should be a primary focus of every response to domestic violence. Um, unfortunately, you know, laws have to be very like, black and white. There can't be gray area in between. So a lot of the domestic violence charges we see are misdemeanor offenses, even though they're pretty brutal crimes that are occurring. Batter's intervention is a way to add an extra layer to this and hold them accountable. So they're not just getting like, the misdemeanor slap on the wrist. So I added a couple of Florida statutes for you all to see. I'm not going to read them to you in their entirety. Um, but there are statutes supporting BIP. This one specifically says that a perfect, if a person is found guilty of, pleads guilty to or no contest to a crime of domestic violence, that they should serve a minimum term of one year probation and complete a batter's intervention program as part of that, uh, as part of the probation. And this is something that through this directory, we're really hoping to see this done in every single intimate partner violence case. 
There's also a statute that outlines what batter's intervention should look like. And again, they mention here that it's to hold batters accountable. The program should be 29 weeks in length, and it shall be based on a model that addresses tactics of power and control over another person. And what Megan was saying earlier, domestic violence, intimate partner violence is not about anger. These guys don't have anger problems. They're not getting in fights at bars. They're not you know, going to the gas station and picking a fight there. It's about power and control over another person, specifically their intimate partner. They're very in control of these outbursts. They know exactly what they're doing. And that's why these specific models are so important. Currently, um, VIPs are not being regulated. There's no one checking in on it, which is part of what we're hoping to do with this list. So we can go out and identify the curriculums that they're using. Um, DCF did use to monitor years ago, and we do have their monitoring tools and use that as a guide along with the Duluth model, which is a preferred model for batter's intervention and create a list based on who's using the appropriate curric curriculum and then get those handed out to the offenders in court. That could be hugely helpful to have it put up on floridacourts.org as the sites that they use. Um, and more reason why this is so important, you know, 29 weeks can buy a survivor enough time to get services and make plans to get out. It's a lot longer than the, what, 24 hours, 48 hours it takes somebody to get the bond money together and get out. And a lot of these guys, because it's about power and control, they get out and they go home and they increase the violence. You know, their survivor, she had the guts to stand up and call the police and they can't have that happen again. This adds another layer of protection for them as well. Um, and then I've talked to people who have facilitated BIPs and some of them have said, there are offenders that go through this and they're thankful to learn another way because they grew up with this in their home and they don't know any different. We might actually be able to reduce some of the offenses here. And these guys, domestic violence offenders, they reoffend at a higher rate than any other violent criminal. So it's a, a multi-layer approach to addressing domestic violence in the community and it's super important. So I'm sure you guys are wondering how you can help with this. Again, awareness, you know, talking to other people about this initiative, what it is, what we're doing, why, why it's important, talking about batter accountability. There's a lot of stuff that we hear in the criminal justice system, and, and I don't blame them. I could see that frustration where they say, oh, well, you know, she, she dropped the charges, she didn't show up to court. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. They're afraid and there are things happening, but that puts the accountability for not being battered on the survivor and takes it away from the offender. We need to focus on batter accountability. Attend trainings when we do them on BIP. Somebody join task force if you want to. You know, we're, we're always talking about this stuff. And do you know anybody that could benefit from domestic violence education training, service training, BIP training? Like why this is important? Put us in touch with them. You know, we do free trainings through task force. We do th free trainings through Sunrise. Sunrise has an incredible team of people that do trainings. Ag again, it's just getting the word out there and Make it having people listen and catching their attention. That's what will really get this initiative moving. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know it's kind of it a quick overview. Yes, I'm sorry. Can I see the first yeah. slide? That you yes, let me all the way. Let's see. <laughs> the very first with the statistics. Well, with the um, the makeup of the um, your organization, the makeup of okay, where we're at, who's all attending currently? Yes. Okay, let me see if I can get this full screen again so that you can see this better. We could definitely use some more attendees. We're doing well. Um, in 2019, when we redid our mission and vision statements, it not a whole lot had been happening. Um, no fault of the task force, just different people changing jobs and things. So we've been rebuilding since. I think we have a pretty good membership, but. We're still building. Do you, are there? Can you on? Can you say that there are representatives from the African American community on these? Um, not what? enough. Not enough. That's there something are. that I'm very aware of. Um, I pay attention to it in our social media to make sure that it doesn't it, that it is representing other communities. But we do not have enough people from other communities attending. How, how were these representatives recruited? So. Um, it's, I believe that 
because a lot there were like a, an initial membership when I came into the chair position in 2019 um, and Megan as well. So a lot were there, but they were really hadn't been attending. So we have a list. I think it's just through community partnerships with people who have been working with DV centers. So I think that that's initially, I don't know if maybe Kelly would know more. I know she's not presenting. I don't know if she'd be comfortable speaking on that or if she knows. No, it's fine. I think this being a community, um, you know, this is like a community response to domestic violence and <clears throat> essentially it kind of ebb and flows and what their tasks, what their goals are and what they want to accomplish. Um, and I think that that um, in previous years had kind of either encouraged or discouraged membership. Um, and for the past several years, there's really been a focus on, you know, engagement within the community and not necessarily, um, they've just been more active, I guess. And I think that part of it is trying to find representation from many, many different resources, um, representation to reflect our community's population. Um, you know, I, I think we had focused on trying to bring in like mental health providers and substance abuse providers just so that because you know basically wanting to recruit anybody that has a, a finger on domestic violence or that could you know their their daily dealings or their their you know their work environment or whatever it might be so this can make a true impact so i think that essentially is kind of what their mission is right now is trying to really bring in necessary community partners bring in a diverse populations bring in you know, basically anybody that that has a stake in the game, so to speak, if that makes sense. Thank you, Kelly. That was perfect. I think um, also, this is Lauren, that we have Mike Bishop on the Pasco EDC staff is also a part of Sunrise, and the EDC itself works with Sunrise. Just, I don't know, if you wanted to add that to your list. So the, the task force is and isn't Sunrise. Um, Sunrise did start the task force um, years ago, but it's not, it, it's kind of a separate entity, if that makes sense. Um, so I would, not everyone who's involved with Sunrise is involved with task force. I think that's the easiest way to explain it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, are there certain groups that you would like represented on the task force that we could be a connection to? I know that, I mean, when I look at that list, I mean, I, I was really proud to see the faith-based community represented, um, the police, the law enforcement, you know, several different organizations that work with um, pretty large groups of our population. And so that would be my question, are there certain sectors that you feel are critical to, to be more involved and can we be a vessel? Honestly, yes. <laughs> I would love to, well, we would love to have somebody there maybe from probation and parole or misdemeanor probation or anyone in the courts, honestly, that's involved with, with the, with, you know, survivors or batters, because that, that's part of it, you know, with the BIP as well as talking about that with the better accountability. Um, so as you see, we have a lot of law enforcement, but we don't, don't have anybody on the legal side, I guess, or the back end of it. That would be really, really helpful. I also think it would help just, and again, Jenna, this is totally your and Megan's call to bring back to the committee, but I am not really seeing any sort of representation here from supervised visitation. And I, I know that um, several years ago when Sunrise was in partnership with the county um, and Judge Tepper on our initiative, they used abusers, whether it's men or women, it didn't matter. Abusers really used supervised visitation as a way to um, intimidate survivors, sending little notes home sometimes with kids or giving them a stuffed animal that looks just like the dog that they may have killed to show power and control over the victims still. So, I'm, and I don't see any specific representation. So that might be another um, area that the committee may decide they want to target to, you know, to try to recruit in some way. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Kelly. Jenna, if um, I did notice that Bay Area Legal Services isn't on here, so if we knew somebody, and I do, what's the what should we do to get them to be part of this? Like, what if we know other people that should maybe are missing or suggestions to you? What should we do? So, um, I mean, if you want to send them our email, I can reach out to them, connect them. 
um, or connect us with them through email and we can talk more about how they can be involved, what might be interesting to them with their involvement. I know we have had in the past people from Bay Area Legal, but there hasn't been anybody in the last year. And that would be very helpful because they do. They work with our survivors all the time. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jenna and Megan. This is really good for us, especially your slide pertaining to how can we help. Are we able to receive a copy of the yes. so that we can share it um, with our minutes for those that were not in attendance and also reflect back on some of the data that you provided, which is in my alarming of course. lightning. <laughs> it really is. It's I did like I said, I didn't know what all you were presented with previously, but I thought that that would be the most pertinent and impactful. Seeing those numbers can be really staggering. Mm -hmm. So I will email this to Kelly um, and then have her send it to you all. Does that work? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having us today. We really Thank appreciate you. the time. Thank you. Thank you. And you're welcome to sit on as an observer or you can disconnect and leave the uh, meeting because we do have additional items. But this is this was something that we were highly anticipating and really appreciate you carving out time to be with us this morning, both you and Megan. Absolutely. Thank it you. was a pleasure, thank you. <laughs> okay. Right. Anyone else on the call that I missed during roll call? I saw Jean, hi Jean, I got you down. I don't Where's know if you can me, Cheryl, but I'm, I'm here. I yep. was having an issue with my volume. Yep, I have you down, Kelly. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I came in late. Who was that? I, I missed that. Jean. Oh, Jean. Jean. Yes, yes. I got you, Jean. Did Rosario get on? I see her name, but I, I don't. Yes, I'm in here. Excellent. Yay, we have a quorum. <laughs> yes, I need it. <laughs> okay, so can we go back to the minutes and um, either if you have edits or if you have any notes that need to be included, we can accept those now. Otherwise, I would like to open the floor for someone to make a motion to accept the minutes and second. Well, I read the minutes and I make a motion to accept them as read. I didn't find any errors. Okay, great. This is Lisa Richardson, I'll second. This is Alicia Guy that, that made the motion. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so now we need to get through our agenda. We have about 30 minutes remaining and the, um, the old business is really just a recap. I don't know that we need to spend a lot of time on it, but uh, basically we did agree to place the uh, the rolling cart with all the commission. Second the motion. I'm sorry. Did I miss, I missed doing something. <laughs> Lauren, what was that? Yes, all in favor. Oh, sorry. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any aye. 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 Okay, any nays, raise your hand. My screen doesn't hold everybody, so I have to keep going back and forth. Okay, so it's so moved, the minutes have been accepted. Thank you. Cheryl, I also we're all supposed to uh, have the video open. I don't see a few faces. So Rosario, um, I open. Yeah. Yep. Great. That's the only one, and I think we're good. Uh -huh. We do have. All right. Thank you. Eight. It looks like we do have eight people with us now. Okay. All right. Got to go back and forth with my reading glasses. So back to old business. Um, thank you, Morgan, for coordinating with Commissioner Starkey regarding the PR rolling container that will be in the commissioner's office as events arise and different activities develop the need for that. We would be able to contact Morgan and Johanna upon her return. Item B, the 100th anniversary of women's rights to vote in the US. 
the next presentation opportunity to the BOCC could be at the July 14th meeting. So the question is, do we want to proceed with that date? I think we should. Well, it's still relevant. And what the time, is it a time certain, Morgan? Yes, it'll be, I believe it was 11 or 1130. It, it'll be exactly what Joanna had set up. The agenda coordinator will just move it to the July 14th meeting. I just need to know um, sooner rather than later so she can move that for us. Um, the other thing with the presentation of the resolution, um, that would be moved to a consent item since it wouldn't be in person. So we can request it be read aloud. But obviously, no one will be there to accept a physical version of it. Um, so we would move it to a consent item. Okay. Thank you. Can anyone else confirm their availability in case I'm not available that day? I have some tentative plans that week and may not be accessible. So I think it's fine if any one of us can present, but I just want to make sure we have a solid plan B. Jean? Yep, I can attend. Great. So as vice chair for the commission, Jean, I think is agreeing to stand in and, and present on our behalf if I'm not available and anyone could join the meeting virtually you just won't be seen is my understanding correct morgan correct yeah. okay okay so item c uh thank you gene for volunteering as vice chair for the commission and um we'll just continue to proceed i think that it does help to have uh the, the structure we have i know that summer has been unable to join us and I did email her to see um, if there's anything else that we can do to, to re-engage her. So I'm not sure if she's traveling or just really busy with the COVID-19 response. The item D, discussing, discuss the fundraiser. And <clears throat> we're gonna also bring it up, I think later in terms of any updates. Again, I know we only had two weeks. <laughs> So as much as we tried to get accomplished in the last two weeks, we may need more time. Are there any updates? Jenny? Are you talking about anyone. the event? Is it Lauren or Jenny? I couldn't, I don't have it here. Cool. With the, with the event for planning for next spring, I was supposed to get with Summer on that. This is Lauren. But uh, I actually had a death in the family right after our last meeting. And um, by the time I got back to work last week, I was a little overwhelmed with what we were working on. So I have not got to reach out to Summer on any planning for next spring. Totally understand. But I will follow up with her after this. Um, but we haven't heard from Summer in a bit, right? No, I haven't. I emailed her directly as well. I actually talked to her last week. Oh, good. Yeah, she's. I, I'm showing a lot of buffering. I don't know if anyone can hear me. Yeah, she's really overwhelmed with emails about these um, programs that are going through, um, you know, for COVID. And she is working some really crazy hours this thing she's just really overwhelmed so just give her time okay thank you very much i'm glad to know she's safe and well and and just continuing to serve our community as a public servant so thank you the uh and again like i prefaced it i mean even tasks that i needed to follow up on i was busily checking through the list on friday we just didn't have a lot of time and we had a short week with the holiday yeah so item E, just a reiteration, Morgan and Danny are the point of contact while Johanna is on maternity leave. Do we have any good news, Morgan? Do we have a new baby? <laughs> Did she deliver? I don't know. I haven't had any updates, but she's officially on maternity leave. So uh, I would assume so. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Badges. If you need it sooner than our next in-person meeting, you can pick those up. There's not a lot of 
you know, visible meetings that any of us are at right now. So that's first your choice if you want to pick those up. Where do you um, pick those up at, Cheryl? They can be picked up from Morgan. They're at the commissioner's office. Um, in which which office is she at? In uh, Newport Ritchie, Morgan? Yes, I'm in Newport Ritchie at the West Pasco Government Center. Okay. If, it's if I have to go like in July for Cheryl, I've, I'll reach out to you and get that. Perfect. So. Sounds good. Do we have an update on item G, Jean and Kelly? Well, Kelly's not with us, sorry. Uh, regarding the interview for the commission with the women's Florida Women's Magazine? Um, yeah, the last conversation I remember having with everybody about that, because I missed the last meeting, um, we were, I, I thought we were holding off so we could get a little bit more structured in our mission statement kind of thing or, or you know kind of what we're doing so i could have enough content for the article okay but um we, i can move ahead with that and i can reach out to kelly others head um and we can pull together an article and present it for your approval great thank you yeah, I think that with us now taking the time to really hear from the community, all the uh, sessions that we had learning about community priorities, community needs, and then the process that we went through to narrow it down to addressing domestic violence in some capacity to reinforce what is happening with our task force, but also being a voice in our community just to raise awareness for this issue. and. Me personally, you know, from over 20, almost 30 years ago, being a survivor of domestic violence, I know how critical it is to not just being aware, but being able to have some place safe that you can access help and not deal with the humility that often uh, survivors feel. So I'm really, really interested in how we can move this agenda forward and and be that be that beacon of hope along with sunrise and the task force yeah so the, this topic is near and dear to my heart definitely yes just like um jenna and megan were saying education and awareness and i think the article really just is going to bring that out and also let people know that there is a status of women within pasco you know county commission so um we'll pull something together and and uh get it ready we're, we're too late for the june publication but we'll get it ready for the july right and i can send you in all of the documents that we have on file that you know kind of explain the process that we went through to give you a little bit of history since this is your third meeting <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome i appreciate yeah. that yeah and kelly you said kelly would also participate so she has a lot of the history as well as the former yeah, it sounds chair. like they reached out to her according to the notes here it, it, um i wasn't aware but you know i know i've been talking to jet hall mm -hmm. about getting in in the magazine apparently she reached out to kelly um or vice versa i'm not sure but yeah i'll, I'll we'll pull something together and and uh present it to you for approval first Great, awesome. Item G was, I'm sorry, item H is the chamber. I know Kelly's not with us. I did reach out to Hope uh, and did not hear back. And again, this was the end of last week. So a lot has gone on since then. And I will give it an, another few days before I reach out again. Lisa, were you able to uh, get any updates on how we can get on the WOW 2? agenda for the trinity area or the, the west pass greater chamber greater chamber of pasco cheryl are you talking to me yes i'm sorry um i followed up with um i was following up with amanda maggard at the hospital oh, i didn't right. realize i didn't realize i was supposed to check on the wow no maybe the maybe i got it mixed up i'm sorry you're right so can you give us an update if you have one? I most certainly can. Um, I reached out to Amanda Maggard last week 
and she actually returned my call on Friday. And I shared with her a little bit of the reason that the Commission on the Status of Women exists. And she provided me with a little bit of background regarding the Simpson Breast Center. Of course, it was the Simpson Breast Center and became that long before Amanda assumed her role as CEO. But she said more recently, they have bought some very high tech equipment. And of course, the Simpsons had were instrumental monetarily in allowing this to happen. She said that she would love to have the opportunity to attend one of our commission meetings and share more about this updated equipment uh, that's available at the Breast Center. And of course, um, you know, she's fine with a, a t doing a presentation uh, via webinar as we've been doing. Excellent. So I'm going to open it up to the CSW. Any comments, any questions? What would we like as a result of this update? Lisa? Yes, Jean. Good morning. Hey. Um, I, I sit on the foundation board with Amanda. And I've been getting a lot of great information you know, from the hospital, not only about you know, the breast center, but just a lot of other areas as well. And, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, it would, we would benefit from having her speak to us. And, you know, they're our community hospital and um, there's just, there's just so much going on um, behind the scenes with Advent that, um, you know, we would all benefit from so I hope that she can join us. Well, I'm noticing uh, item I, which says, what do we want to do for the month of October? And that might be one thing that we could have her come and present. This is Alicia. Absolutely. Are we that all in agreement Alicia. with that? Does anybody have any concerns if we can at least just invite her to either July or August so that we can raise um, awareness of what we can do? Okay. Lisa, would you mind following up on that request? And I'll be happy to. And so we would like to see if she'd be available to attend either our July or August meeting. Correct. In okay. Of, Do in we, of October. Um, would, Morgan, would it be possible for you to confirm the date of the July and August meeting? I just want to make sure I have the dates correct. So the July meeting is July 6th. Um, and eventually, I guess we have to decide whether we're going to continue that one virtual or not. And then August is the third. August third. Okay, I'll be sure to end there at eleven o'clock. I'll be sure and share those dates with Amanda. They're actually still on the calendar as two thirty. Okay. Because we haven't decided. We haven't made any decision on any meeting past this yet. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So don't share a time yet. So we do. We, I guess we need to confirm. I have it on the agenda yeah, for later sure. that we okay. need to discuss uh, okay. time and virtual and all that. Okay. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you all. So really, when you look at the next section for the new business, a lot of it overlaps because these are some ongoing topics. So we've already covered um item 10 and 11 and 12 to a certain extent and um really just looking at item e which is do we have to continue a virtual meeting i know that the libraries did a soft open i saw some i mean i feel like i've seen more impressions on social media than my brain can handle but i feel like i saw that that was happening that they were doing a soft opening and having limited guest come in so that may be a challenge for us because we're not able to social distance in that room if all 15 members show up what is the what are your thoughts what are your suggestions as we move forward i'm opening it up to the commission this is alicia i um had a concern for social distancing as well so i think to 
to, you know, go on the side of um, safety. We should just look at um, to continue the um, virtual meetings in July and August. Are we able to go back to 2.30, Morgan? Because the 11 o'clock came up as a result of when this WebEx was available. And I know we have to use this for the county. I can confirm that. I'm not positive on that. I know that the reason we had done 11 this time is Joanna had sent out uh, two different times. And this is the one that most people were available. So maybe we can do that again and then schedule with the WebEx platform. Okay. That. that way we, ha we can ensure we're going to meet a quorum because I know people's schedules are all different right now. Correct. We, well, over the course of the year, I know that we had agreed on the 2.30 time based on the commissioners that were engaged at the time. And uh, we've only had a transition of two of them, so that wouldn't completely sway the majority. But I know that two people have reached out to me regarding major concerns with the 11 o'clock time. And um, if we can go back to 2.30, even if it's virtual, I think that that would be in the best interest of the group overall. With the people that are here, can we do us like a little poll or a little survey? Yeah, we can. I mean, I've I, again, I've heard from several of you that said, when are we going back to 2.30? So I don't know. I mean, that was our agreed upon time for the year. So I don't know that we need we're missing seven people. So I don't know that the poll would really help right this moment, but I'm more than happy. That's true, Cheryl, that's true. <laughs> Cheryl, I was thinking that might be good because it sort of transitions us, like gets our bodies and our brains going back to that 2.30 if eventually we end up meeting someplace. Right. And then I guess my, I mean, this is just my own little question, Morgan, do we have to use WebEx? So, cause the conversation that I, recall was that the tech support for us to do WebEx was not available at the 2.30 time. So if we're able to use another platform, is that possible or does it have to be the county WebEx for recording? Because some of us may have access to other platforms. I do not know the answer to that, but I can follow up with county administration and find out what the guidelines are on that because I, I don't know. Okay. If you can, that would be great. No problem. Um, WebEx has just been what the county obviously has right. uh, platforms on for virtual meetings right now, but I can find out if that's something we have to do or if that's uh, a, we, we can use someone else's platform. I'm not sure. Okay. If you can look into that, I mean, as an organization, I'm willing to offer Premier's resources. We do have access to two different video conferencing platforms. Um, one is mainly for our programs, Zoom, and then we also have BlueJean video conferencing. They both have recording capabilities. And so I'm just putting it out there as an offer if that's something that we want to consider, if that's even an option. Okay. Cheryl, this is Alicia again. On the, um, the summary of ethics that we got uh, in the email, yes. the meeting requirements is open to the public, access available opportunity for participation. So we just have to keep that in mind if we move it. Right. So the notice, the notification has to go out two weeks in advance. And yes, if it's on a different platform, I'm assuming that that's what we would include in that notification. But let's first find out if we can keep it on WebEx, do it at 2.30. That's our preference. We need the support. We appreciate it. <laughs> And then if we do have the option to use another platform and keep it at 2.30, then let's see who else on the commission also has access because um, it, is, it is much harder to facilitate and moderate at the same time. Okay, I have uh, something. If you have a problem with the WebEx, I can share my, some, my Zoom account if you need it, okay? Okay. Thank you, Rosario. Okay. So let the minutes reflect those uh, options okay. that commission members are offering.
Okay, so the review of assignments, once again, we're ahead of ourselves. We've actually covered all of these and um, I don't have anything else. I'll open up the floor if there are any other topics of discussion that we need to take into consideration. Please speak and let us hear what you have to say. Carol, I just wanted to ask, uh, once we get the article, do you want me to just do like the press release so to see if anybody will pick it up or you just want me to target Florida Women Magazine? A press release regarding? The article about our commission. The one I'm going to put together for the Florida Women Magazine. Right. So you would do a press release saying that the article is in the magazine or just a no. press release about the work of the commission? Right, the press release. In other words, do you want me to offer it the article just to Florida Women Magazine or do a press release for the media? Let's open it up for discussion. I don't I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. This is Lisa Richardson. You guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think since Jean and Kelly Mothershead are going to you know, be going to all this effort to put together such a nice article that we'll be reviewing. I think we need to maximize um, our return on investment. I would definitely say do a press release as well, because who knows where else that article may end up being picked up and it would just maximize, um, again, the return on investment of their time and effort with putting the article together. Excellent. Everyone else, is there anyone in disagreement? I guess would be the question. Are we okay with that? Some head nods. Any concerns with pushing it out too much? I mean, there's there's accountability factors here. We need to raise the bar. I think it'll really give you know some of the content awareness and the, you know that's that's why i brought it up about the press release okay excellent well if you can draft that i would be happy to work with you on that um we do have our local weekly papers that love to get good content like that and then of course all of our other mainstream outlets <laughs> Cheryl, it's Alicia Guy. Um, I just heard from um, Joanna, and she said she had a baby girl on May oh, 16th. Oh, wow, yay! Six pounds, 13 ounces, Isabella Grace. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you uh -huh. for sharing. Did you say May 18th, Alicia? May 16th. May Okay, so it was right before our last meeting. Well, that is awesome news. Congratulations wow. to her. Well, we are at the conclusion of our meeting and in preparation for the July meeting, I would say that um, we definitely want to think about independently. We want to think about our role with the domestic violence focus and all that we learned today. The PowerPoint will come out. However, I really want us to dig in a little bit further and collectively come up with our action steps so that we can make sure that we're including that in our next work plan. And then uh, the same for as we head into uh, the fall season with Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we're going to, Lisa is going to, and Jean, since she serves on the foundation board, is going to coordinate having Amanda uh, Maggard as the guest speaker which is wonderful. I do get a chance to work with Amanda closely on the Community Health Needs Assessment Committee, and she is really um, a wonderful asset to our community. So I'm excited to potentially have her as our guest speaker in the coming months. With that, I will close the meeting. Uh, if there's any other comments, raise your hand and we can make sure that you have a chance to speak before we close the meeting. Okay. Well, thank you all for tuning in and carving out time. Uh, very productive discussion. We are 
moving forward. And I hope that you all have a wonderful week. Stay safe and um, just continue to practice all the safety precautions that we've been encouraged to do. The meeting is officially adjourned. It's 1157 AM. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.